Sit back and enjoy the first of three parts of this year's feature. Check out the wide array of Oliver and Hartpar engines, along with a brief intro to the line of auto engines at the end. Mike Smazel, I'm from Sedalia, Missouri. I've been a member of the Roll Log Association since 1992. Uh, this uh, tractor here belonged to uh, Swedberg, who was, with, and I believe this was the first heavyweight tractor to be at Roll Log at the show. Uh, there's a long uh, history on the radiator, tells the history of the tractor, shipped to Lily, South Dakota when it was new, and then ended up in North Dakota, and then ended up in this area, and it was completely rebuilt by Elmer Larson. Um, I think it's been at the show ever since the show started, so we hopefully it'll continue to be here for a lot, lot more years to come. My name is Benjamin Roth. I run this tractor for John Tissy of Crosby, North Dakota. It's a hard part little devil. It's a two cycle tractor and it wasn't very successful. There are only three of these tractors left and this is the only running one. Michael Simons, I'm from Fargo, North Dakota. This is a 1836 hard par, it's made in 1928. What makes this tractor a little unusual is it's got a PTO on it. Hard par was the first tractor company to offer a live PTO. And so the way this works is the PTO comes off the back here, but it actually drives off the front so we can come over here and I can show you where that comes off. So the clutch mechanism for the PTO is here, and then it's chain drive down to the bottom shaft, and then there's a gearbox underneath the bottom of the tractor, right under there, and then that drives the shaft out the back. And then you engage the clutch with this arm right here. So that's what makes this tractor unusual. And then next to it, We've got a 2850. And this is a four cylinder tractor. And what makes this tractor a little bit unusual is it's the seventh one off the assembly line. And the early 2850s had a very small radiator and they were prone to overheating. And if you look at some of the other 2850s that we have here, they have a much bigger radiator and that's how they solved the problem. This tractor is owned by my dad and he lives in Carrington, North Dakota. His name's Henry. I'm Pete Kruger from Albany, Minnesota. I uh, work for Joe Peternell, the uh, owner of this tractor here. It's a 1914 
part par 3060. Uh, this tractor actually spent its working life on a farm not far from here, over on the Red River. Um, was bought there originally and uh, was bought off the farm about four or five years ago. Um, it is, a, like I say, a 1914 3060. It's completely original from the radiators to the engine. The engine's been rebuilt. Uh, the gearing, the canopy, everything on it is original. A few boards that we had to replace, but we we, we tried to maintain as much originality on the tractor as, as possible. So it uh, did originally come with extension rims. However, it never appeared to have done much for plowing. It was used mainly for threshing on the farm. And it runs good. We got beautiful weather. Hello, my name is Donnie Eilers. I'm from Millbank, South Dakota. I'm currently owner of a 1938 Oliver 80. Uh, what makes it special about this tractor is uh, Oliver row crop. It's got the wide front. The wide fronts are kind of rare and hard to find. It also has 40-inch uh, rear tires. They no longer make 40-inch tires, and trying to find them is something else. Other than that, I just purchased a tractor. I found it up in Painesville, Minnesota. Bought it from an older gentleman who was getting out of the business. And uh, I've got silver Olivers in my collection. I got an Oliver 880, an Oliver 90, an Oliver 80, an Oliver 70, and an Oliver 60, along with a John Deere B and a John Deere 70. So just trying to keep the, the collection going. Hello, my name is Stacy Torbla. I'm from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, and uh, we're just here for the first time for all of our year. Uh, been to roll log since I was, my mom and dad took me when I was really small. Been here lots of times, but we, we've decided to bring tractors this year and, and prayed with them. So um, I've got a, I've just got a 55 here, gas 55 that we bought, dad and I were at an auction and happened to be there and we, we bought that one and hauled it home a couple years ago. And the main reason I'm here is because dad has a 70 um, with a Rayco cab that was factory installed on it, which is kind of a rare thing. So uh, he's here with his, his factory installed cab on an Oliver and I'm just here joining him for the ride. So uh, yep, it's been fun to be here. Hello, I'm uh, Carolyn Parrott from Shiner, Texas. This is a 1946. Oliver 60 industrial tractor is the 33rd industrial tractor made. Uh, we have a controversy as to whether they were 500 made over the three year period or 850 made. So any, either way, 33rd is pretty good. Um, we actually, uh, it was used uh, on the highway for, for the highway maintenance and mowing in Texas, just uh, west of us. Uh, we actually were looking for uh, another Oliver 60. We have an Oliver 60 row crop, a uh, Cockshot 60 row crop, Oliver 60 standard, and a Cockshot 60 standard. So we wanted the industrial to, to kind of fit in with it. We actually found the tractor just down the road from us, not, not too many miles, uh, from a gentleman that was actually the mayor of the town, and he had used it in parades so we bought it from him and we fixed it up, rebadged it. So it's been in uh, several of our parades. Uh, we do belong to a tractor club there in uh, the Shiner area. And we enjoy uh, showing the different tractors. We kind of alternate from the, the Oliver Cockshuts uh, road crop to the standards. Sometimes we take two tractors. So he can drive, I can drive. And uh, we're uh, Name of the club is South Texas Wheel Spinners and Crate Twisters because we do show tractors and engines. So we, we just really enjoy it. Rain and all, it's really been an awesome show. So. Hi, uh, my name is Lance Norlin. I'm from Minot, North Dakota. Here at Rolog 2021 with my 1936 Oliver Hartpar 70 row crop. I'm full steel, pretty much all original. Uh, got a period correct umbrella on there. Getting a lot of good comments on that. People love to look at that. Uh, it's got a six-cylinder Continental engine, Perslea Kitten.
Haven't really done much to it. I do have a little radiator leak I gotta take care of, but I just went through the parade with it and I made it, so. Uh, really in love with this tractor. There's only a couple of them here this year, but uh, just nice to get out and show it and drive it around. Otherwise, it sits in the barn. <laughs> um, we're here with my club, the Northern Lights Oliver Collectors. That's a, a chapter of the Oliver Harpar Association. And uh, the, our club, along with the great Northern Oliver Collectors, we helped uh, kind of get this going. Um, in addition to that, I, I got to give a thanks to Troy Anderson and uh, Cody Wang, and they've been our direct contacts, and it's, it's turned out good. I think at last count we had over 170 tractors or something like that, all of our tractors, so pretty good showing, I, I think, so we're happy with it. But yeah, good time, love it. Definitely come back. <laughs> Greetings to uh, Rolag, Minnesota, to the Western Minnesota Steam Threshers. My name is Life Ockery, my wife Cheryl, we're from uh, Northwest Minnesota at Stephen. Uh, we've got a, a family with about uh, 10 tractors here for the uh, parade. This uh, behind us is a 1963 770 Cockshot tractor. Being Oliver is being featured uh, this year at the Hill. Cockshot is kind of a family member of the uh, Oliver family. So uh, this is a tractor that we bought a couple years ago and restored. In uh, my my dad had uh, Cockshots growing up when we were growing up and so we spent a lot of time on the cockshot tractors so when I saw this one in the neighborhood to be restored I thought this is a prime candidate so again greetings everybody okay hi my name is Jim Ockrey and I'm from Underwood Minnesota and I brought this G955 Moline down I picked it up about two years ago the 955 is one of the last Molines and what they were was the front half is Moline and then the back half is like an Oliver 1955. So it's kind of a hybrid tractor trying to use up all the parts. So anyway, they had a 451 engine and I bored it out. It's a 504 engine and when you do that, they're a very good starting tractor. Um, and I think it's the first Moline in the country that's got an iron bull canopy on it, uh, number one. So anyway, it's a lot of fun rebuilding this one, and um, I've made a custom step for it. Changed the toolbox location, painted it, did a lot of leak cleanup and all those things that you normally encounter as well. I also brought two 12, 1250 tractors, one 1250 Oliver and one 1250 Cockshot. The 1250 Cockshot would also be a real rare tractor both of them had that little gasoline engine uh, and they were built by Fiat and when they built them basically what they did is they used up the military surplus engines that uh, Fiat had made for the Italian military. Nice little tractor but anybody that knows a 1250 gas tractor knows that they're better just for show than for working. But. Uh, Pretty rare trackers. So. Good morning, yeah, Jim Lippert from uh, Dandy, Minnesota, about 100 miles west of the Twin Cities on US 212. I uh, bought this tractor, the 1949, on an auction, and last winter my son and I were looking it over, and I have a 1950 model, so we decided to make one out of the two. And uh, this one had nothing done, we just cleaned it up, uh, primed it and painted it. The tin work is just as you see it. And so it was our COVID project, uh, 
we worked on it over winter, so we put a sign in there just to be in several parades with it. And so the way it turned out, turned out real good. Have a 5166 Oliver with a 21B uh, Sycamore. And then my son has a, a 5277 diesel wide front and a 1950, uh, it's a 1966 tractor with a uh, Detroit diesel and a front wheel assist. And then I brought a, a lawn and garden tractor, which was a the first year when white came out with the silver and black and uh, I changed it and I painted it green and red wheels then I had the decal made on the side of wannabe and Oliver and then I put the flags on it and so it's just a conversation something different catches people's eye little entertainment just kind of adding to the to the festive activities so yeah hi I am Al Engelman from Green Isle Minnesota and glad to be at the Rolog show we brought uh, 10 Oliver tractors up here and this is one of my favorites, my Super 88 High Crop. Uh, it was sold brand new back in the day in southwest Minnesota and probably one of the only high crops that was sold new in Minnesota and um, I got a lot of favorite Oliver tractors but I got more back home but uh, we brought 10 of them here and and this Super 88 High Crop, a Super 66 uh, gas with the single front wheel, a Super 99 GM, uh, an 88 that my nieces pull with. It's painted pink and a 770 with an Oliver Haymore and hay conditioner, a little Super 44, a 990 with a GM diesel and a old style Streamline 88 standard and a Miss Green 880 and a 660 gas and uh, I brought along the rest of my family my, and my girlfriend um, my two nieces and their mother and three little boys so we're just happy to be here My name is Bill Martinson. I currently live in Fargo. 
but from 1970 to 1975, I worked for White Farm Equipment, and I was part of the design team that uh, did the 2255 tractor. It was a fast track project, and uh, it was based on as much existing componentry as possible. So the biggest thing was the engine installation, the CAD engine, and then the sheet metal that would uh, accommodate that wide of an engine. And so I was part of the design team, and then the, the project lead left, and I stepped up and took that place. And then when it went into production, I spent two weeks in the plant with the startup, uh, whatever was required to support it, and make sure everything went smoothly. And it did go smoothly. So um, I only had one issue, and there's a uh, little uh, shroud here that goes around the fan, and they weren't quite round enough, and they were hitting the fan, and we couldn't ship tractors, and it was a little bit of a bad problem for a while, but there was someone in the factory that says, I think I can fix that for you, give me one of those. And he took the sh one of the shrouds, he found some tooling that existed, and rolled that little bead in there, that brought it into round, and it was that way for the life of the tractor. It was a fun project. I enjoyed every minute of it. John Weber and Joe Weber. We, we brought the tractor be, because we just bought it. We bought it three years ago in Moorhead. It, it, it would start, but it wouldn't speed up. So we drug it on the trailer, took it home. We just got it running a week ago. The car, we had to get a carburetor kit, put that in. But now we get it here, and well, we've only run it a couple of days. So we found out it steers very hard. Probably going to need some work on their gearbox yet and a few other things to check over. We've also got another little 550 here. We've got a 1755 Oliver. We've got a 285 White. And we've got an 1836 Harpar. And we come here, we've been coming here for several years. And we even got something prior to tractors. We got a couple teams of horses. So, but it, you know, you got two priorities, your horses or your tractors. Well, this year it had to be the tractors because we got all of us. And we're from Eccleston, North Dakota. That's right between Valley City and Jamestown, North Dakota. Jamestown and Valley City are suburbs of us. We're right be 16 miles to Valley, 18 miles to Jamestown. And we've been coming for many years and we, we just enjoy this show. And uh, five of the boat motors, say five of the Okay, and five of the boat motors up in the expo building are ours. The typewriter is also ours. Hi, I'm Doug Torbla from Thief River Falls, Minnesota. I have an Oliver 70 here that my dad bought one year old. It has a factory cab on it, and it's, uh, he bought it after, at the first year, he put it in his day book that he was polishing his new tractor. So it's still dad's tractor, and, and it's got his uh, signature on it. And uh, my son talked me into coming to Rolog, so we decided to load a couple tractors up. We have the 55 and the 70 today. We were, they were wondering why I didn't restore my dad's tractor. And I says, well, my dad died many years ago. And he took his jacket off and he put it over the seat. And it's still there. So I can't take my, jacket off, his da my dad's jacket off of the seat and restore the tractor. So it's got to stay the way it is, just like dad had it. So. Windows go up and down with, with, with cranks, and the back windows go up and down with straps. <laughs> I'm um, Joe Hass. Uh, I live about five miles uh, between here and Holly. This is my great grandpa's tractor, bought back in uh, 1953. He used it uh, mainly for his uh, seating tractor. I think it was 500 acres, but this thing did about 300 acres planting. In 1993, I believe it was, was his auction sale. His brother, who lived down by Winona, uh, got the tractor. I think it was in 2009 or 2010, somewhere in there, I believe, he, he passed away and his son called my grandpa and said, this belongs in your family, not mine. If you want it, come and get it. Uh, so this summer in 21, um, my dad inherited it, 
I basically had to do some carburetor work, put a new battery on, a new gas filter, uh, cleaned out the gas tank, and it turned, took about four turns and it turned on. So it was pretty sweet. Um, pretty proud of it. It's cool that it's uh, staying in the family and hopefully I can carry that on. Uh, and hopefully one day my son can do the same. So it's his first year here. We're hoping to keep bringing it back. Um, but I just uh, appreciate letting us be here, so. Hi, I'm Kevin Withers. I got started out here with my family in 1967. Um, my dad started displaying engines here at Rolog. Um, our building we're in, Auto Expo building, was started in 1971. And uh, my dad got into collecting auto engines early on. Uh, a 50 horse engine that's beside me here was used in gold mining in the mountains of Colorado. And the elevation was so high that the engine didn't perform very well. So it is basically still like a new engine inside. Uh, they had put a smaller pulley on it to, to get the horsepower work out of it. So in about 1981 or so, we had went out to Colorado and had, we had purchased it from another collector in a pile of pieces needing a lot of work, lots of parts made as hikers and that would come in and pull brass and steal brass thinking it was made out of gold. So. So it's been here quite a number of years. Engine was built 1894 by the Auto Gas Engine Works in Philadelphia. Um, it has a earlier uh, design feature with a with a stepped out base on it, and that so uh, hit and miss. It's the only 50 horse hit and miss early auto that's known to exist. So, runs on gasoline. This is a 60 horse auto that was purchased about 1981-1982 from a good friend of ours named Harold Ottaway in Wichita, Kansas. Harold had acquired it. It had been put into a city park by the family that had owned it and um, from Emporia, Kansas, and it was used on a large personal family farm to run a grain elevator by the Price family of Emporia. Um, engine is built in 1893 and had the same features as the 50 horse with the early stepped out base on it and runs on gasoline, hit and miss, um, kind of the pride of of the Withers Auto Collection here, and with, with the, uh, my dad was real proud of it. We're proud of it. And when Harold had it, he was rather proud of it too. So, so engines are about 130 years old, and they're still running. And, and we're glad glad to be able to share them this year for the auto. That's four features.